Hello YouTube, it's the Orchid Prince here. Um, I just wanted to go over a few things with y'all. I've been saying that I was gonna do a potting video and you know what? It's time because I did just receive my, um, my orchids from Fred Clark at Sunset Valley Orchids, which he was very, very generous, a little too generous, because now I've got to pot a whole bunch. So I'll be doing that all day, but um, I'm not gonna make y'all sit and watch an entire video of me potting up 120 different Catasetni orchids. So what um, I decided to do was actually go ahead and go over, sorry, yes, my hair again. Um, to go over just a few of the things that you'll need for uh, potting up Catasetni orchids. Now keep in mind, everything that I'm going over today is just the way that I do it. You do not have to do it this way. This is probably not by the textbook, so if you're part of the American Orchid Society, please don't you know, send me a message saying that I am putting out bad information because I'm putting out just the information that I do. Um, I have a lot of orchids and they are all um, they're all seedling size, so they're, they're coming from plugs. I guess that's why he was so generous with what he did, but um, you know what? He said that they uh, could bloom this year, if not next year. So I am thinking about, you know, I've talked to Orcaholics Anonymous. I've not gotten a reply yet, but I'm pretty sure that they'll be okay with it. Um, I have a lot of the same orchids, so um, I've got 20 of this, 10 of that, 15 of this, 15 of that. And um, I was thinking about doing a group experiment on different ways of growing catasetni type orchids. Because keep in mind, these come from seeds. So when they come from seeds, um, it's not like the Mariclones that you can get with Cattleyas uh, or actually with many different orchids where it is exactly what that, I mean, it, it's a clone. It looks exactly like the other one. This one, I don't remember, another YouTuber said something. I wanna say it was either Astrid or Brittany. Uh, but one of them said that when they come from seeds, it's just like you and your family. You have brothers and sisters, but you don't look the same. You have some similarities, but you do not look all the same. Um, maybe the, the color of the orchid's going to be a little bit different, or um, the way it grows might be a little bit different, but it's going to be a little bit different. So I'd like to see all the different variations. Now I could easily do that here by just potting, you know, all 20 of them up and watching them grow, fertilizing them. But I don't think that's very fun. I think it would be cool to see how different we grow in different environments because I'm here in South Florida where catasetni type orchids are going to thrive. We have very high humidity. Um, it is very warm outside, and that's what most of them are used to. Um, as you know, during active growth for um, catasetum type, or type orchids, they need a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity. Um, they like to drink, 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 drink. But then again, during dormancy, they don't need any water. Um, so I've actually been doing a little bit of research on how to get mine to go into dormancy because we don't really have seasons here, so it's not gonna really know, hey, it's winter now when it's still 80 degrees outside. So um, I'm gonna go through different methods of that later on. As you can tell, these are in full swing right now. I have them soaking to loosen up just a little bit of sphagnum moss that there is. Feels a little slimy down here. But these orchids are in great condition, so I wanna get them potted up as quick as possible. Now, I'm probably not going to disturb this root ball too terribly much, because if you look, some of these are active root tips already down at the bottom, and I do not wanna damage it, because they do grow very vigorously, but I don't want to, you know, these are still baby plants. I don't want to damage them too much. So why don't I go ahead and get into it. Um, I'll go over the supplies that I use. Um, things that I have gotten from other um, orchid tubers, as I call them. Uh, just little hints here and there. Because keep in mind, I've only been growing kind of set type orchids for a couple months now. So I've been doing a lot of research on them, watching a lot of videos on them. And I'm just going to pot it up um, using a, a mixed variety of methods that I've actually seen that I trust and believe that these growers know exactly what they're doing. Now keep in mind, this is not the typical way of doing it either. Um, even from the other orchids, uh, um, orchid tubers, they do it their own way as well. 
So this is just the way that we do it. It does not mean that it won't work for you. It does not mean that it will work for you. But I thought I'd just go ahead and show you. So, well, I should really just start pulling my hair out. So there's a few things that um, you will need for this. And yes, I am cramped down here because again, I'm using my phone. So I do apologize. But I actually went out and bought this. Now I got a set of 24 for like $4. Um, I am a chef, so I can actually buy things from um, places that only restaurants can buy from, like Restaurant Depot and stuff like that. So I went in and I got some of these. The reason I want to try this out is these are about blooming size. Actually, there's a, an old bloom spike on one of them, but I want to see the, the roots grow. Now, I'm, I'm going to be potting it up in this one for this video. The rest of them will be going in seed pods so I won't be able to to judge them too much just until the dormant season where I can actually split them back up again and uh, when the new growth well sorry when the new growth starts next year I'll split them back up again and put them in more pots but I got a lot more than I expected so I was not prepared for it so I only got one set of these I'm going to put a few of each one in one of these so I can see how they're growing because typically they'll grow about the same so if I see that one's not doing too well I'll look at the the tray and make sure that they're still doing good. Uh, but this will actually allow me to do that. I'm going to poke holes in it for ventilation, but, uh, and I'm going to use a different potting media. It's a mix between um, the Dendrobium Orchid Potting Mix because it has the bigger, um, chunkier pieces of wood in it. And then I've got some sphagnum moss as well. So, uh, things that you'll need. You'll need a container. You will need your orchid. Now, when repotting, always soak the media just because if you need to get rid of anything, if you see any rot, go ahead and clip it off. I say these roots actually look okay, and because they're so small, even though the roots don't do much of a purpose um, later on, and most people will cut them off, I've decided to keep them on. So I'm going to be repotting this one. Um, I will be using steaks. Now, I got bamboo skewers. You look right here um it is memorial day weekend i went to Publix, got some bamboo skewers dollar fifty so you get a hundred of them these are a little bit too big but i think i'm gonna actually keep it that size this is just going to make sure that it stabilizes so i will be tying this up later on um with either twine or even i've got so many um green rubber bands from whole foods might start doing that because these will plump up a little bit more and it'll give them room to stretch as long as I'm not cutting off any of the circulation and everything so you've got your potting mixture you've got your pot you've got your orchid what else do you need for catasetny type orchids now catasetny type orchids love to eat so you need to have some kind of food now whether you want to fertilize them with a little bit of fertilizer um, almost every single time you water them or you can use something like Osmocote. Now, Osmocote is a time-release fertilizer for indoor and outdoor plants. So you put a light sprinkling on a couple of different layers, let those roots find it out. It keeps them fed, keeps them growing, keeps them plump. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I am going to take, I have some of the potting media soaking, but I'm going to take some dry media and put it into the bottom. Why am I doing this? Because these things get top heavy. So it's not really too much of a big deal right now because it's so small, but I want to actually judge how it's going to be for when I do it in the future as well. So these are the biggest ones that I've gotten. Now these are um, actually, they're a different type of catasetny orchids. It's not considered a true catacetum. Um, Oh, I'm going blank right now, but um, I will post the, the name of this below because it is in my phone, which I'm actually recording with right now. But anyway, we'll go ahead and move on. They will um, be potted up exactly the same as all my other catacetums anyway. So first things first, put a layer down to stabilize it. Now, I also got some lava rocks. I might start doing that as well for something like this just to give it a little bit more stability. Then you're going to take a mixture. I'm going to do a mixture. You don't have to, but I will. And I'm going to wring it out a little bit of sphagnum and fur bark. Take 
that out. Take my Osmo coat, first layer. And give it a good little shake in there. Keep in mind they love to eat. I'm going to do another little layer. And yes, these are wet because they, um, the orchids ride to be very dry, so I'm actually going to have the media very wet for this. Some people like to use dry media just because it allows it to stabilize and it allows it to set in. I like mine wet because then I do not have to water it. Now, if you look, the reason why I did the dry is because I am using one on top and I don't have any holes yet, but I will be making slits in the bottom about that wide, just like you would a regular orchid pot, and I'll be putting holes throughout. So, sorry I didn't already have that done. Completely forgot about it. But, you're going to take your orchid. You're going to judge where you want it. So I actually want a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit more. Now, I squeeze my root bulbs just a little bit so that they know it's okay to start going and looking for the rest of the pot. In my head, that's what they're saying. Um, the reason why is because my mother is a master grower when it comes to a garden, not catasetni type orchids, not orchids in general, not even, I think she has one orchid and I think I gave it to her. But um, as long as you bust it up, the roots will actually start again. So I'm just busting it up a little bit. Now, because there's not a lot of sphagnum moss in here, that's why I'm not taking the sphagnum moss out. I just don't wanna damage any of the really, really good roots. So I'm gonna keep this side a little bit open, put it in, and then fill her in. Let me go ahead and put the stake in. I'm actually going to Put it on this side. The reason I'm putting it on this side is because I'm not going to attach it to the new growth. I'm going to attach it to one of the back bulbs right here. So I'll be tying that up in just a minute. Remember you do not want to get your orchid too far underneath the media because that will promote rot. If you see one of your back bulbs rotting, take it out. Separate it from the plant. The plant like this that grows so vigorously should be okay. Do not quote me on that, but it should be okay. All right, so this is how I, I do my any type orchids. Now I will dust a little bit of this on top for future waterings. Remember, I do not water from the top. I will water from the bottom and from the sides um, when I do start watering this, which will be almost every single day. So if you look, the reason why I've actually, oh, you can't really see. So the reason why I've done this is because it will have a dry spot in the bottom. You can see the sphagnum moss right here. You can see the osmocote. So it will have plenty of room to grow. So that's how I pop my catacetum type orchids. Um, make sure to stay tuned because I will be doing other videos on different ways of potting catacetum type orchids. Um, and I'm, oh, I believe I remember what this one was because I was very excited about that. There's, um, this is not the one that I was thinking where it was jumbo swan mixed with um, fantasy or something like that. This is actually, this is a catacetum type orchid. It is actually, um, a mix with the catacetum type orchid. It is a painted desert mixed with um, the Lois Clark um, Wonder Woman, which I'm very excited about because I love Wonder Woman. Um, I also love the painted desert. If you look um, up catacetum or the catacetony type painted desert, it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous flower. And if you look up Wonder Woman, that's a gorgeous flower too. So I cannot wait to see what these actually look like. So once they bloom, I will of course post more videos. 
Um, I've got a lot of stuff to do right now, so I will catch you later. Keep in mind, this is the last day for the Orchid giveaway, so make sure to comment below that video. Make sure to hit like, hit subscribe. Um, but this has been the Orchid Prince, and I'm out.